We are starting chapter 12 today, um, and in chapter 12, we are going to talk about light. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the behavior of light. We're going to talk about what materials absorb light, reflect light, transmit light, what that looks like when it's going through a prism, um, and things like that. So this is 12.1. So when you talk about light, the first thing that um, we should really kind of uh, refer to or um, approach as is that if you're in the room at night, say if you are one of those people that likes to sleep in pitch dark room, um, say you've been in the pitch dark room for a couple of minutes, your eyes get adjusted to the super dark room, you might be able to make out certain things in the room. Um, if there is any small amount of light, so maybe there's your hallway light is on, but your door's closed, the light could come from underneath your door, could light up some objects. Or if it is really, really pitch black, um, you might not be able to see anything in the room. And the reason that you can see anything in a room, even if it's dark, is because there has to be some sort of light or amount of light that is reflecting off objects in your room in order for you to see it. So when you have light coming in, it reflects off an object, comes into your eyes, and your eyes are able to decipher it by transmitting it to your brain and your brain is able to say, oh, that's a table, that's a trash can, don't hit it. Um, and so light really is absolutely necessary in order for objects to reflect it, in order for us to see the object and its color. When we talk about light, um, we also have to talk about objects um, and what the material those specific objects are made of. Because depending on the material those objects are made of, it will tell you if that object can absorb the light, if it can reflect the light, or if it can transmit the light. And there are three specific names that we're going to refer to when we talk about objects that do these three things, absorb, reflect, or transmit. They're called opaque, translucent, and transparent. So we're gonna talk about what these types of, um, what these words can refer to and what are examples and what they really mean when we talk about light. So the first thing is called an opaque material. So this is like the first pot that you see um, right here made out of clay. One thing you can notice is that if there was a candle placed inside of this pot, you would not be able to see it like you could kind of see in the translucent or the transparent pot that you see um, beside the opaque pot. Um, so opaque materials are able to absorb light and they're able to reflect light, but they cannot allow light to pass through them. So you can't really see through them, therefore you can't see if there is something inside of that pot. Translucent material is somewhere between opaque and transparent, meaning that they actually are able to transmit light by scattering it. Um, therefore, you cannot see absolutely crystal clear through them, but you can probably tell there is something inside of them, especially if it's lit up, um, such as the candle that is placed inside of the translucent pot that we see in this picture. So it will usually appear a little bit blurry. So this could be like a lampshade that you might have um, or something like that. And then lastly, we have something called transparent materials, like it, see, like it says in the word, it's transparent. You can see through it, right? So this material is able to transmit light without any, um, without scattering it, which allows you to see clearly through that material so you can clearly make out there is a candle inside of there or whatever other material you might put inside of that um, object. When you look at a mirror, you might notice that you see a reflection. So how does this occur? The reason you see a reflection is because there's some sort of light source. That light source releases light waves that reflect um, off of you 
And then once it reflects off of you, it hits the mirror. The mirror then reflects the light off of the mirror um, into your eye and therefore you are able to decipher what you are seeing in the mirror. So anytime you have reflection, it's because there is some sort of light source that releases a light wave that hits an object and that object is then reflecting that light back into your eye. So we're gonna talk about a couple definition um, that we need to know in order to um, understand what it really means for a light to be reflected. One of the main definitions is called the law of reflection. There are two um, parts to the law of reflection. One is called the angle of incidence, which is pretty much the angle um, that light strikes um, the mirror surface. And then the angle of reflection, which is a reflected light wave hitting off of the mirror back to either your eye or, or to something else. So when we talk about the law of reflection, we are saying that um, it's the angle at which a light wave is striking a surface. In this case, it could be a mirror. Um, and it's going to equal the same as the angle that is being reflected. So if you look at this image, you can see that the red arrow in, um, at the top, what that is coming in and hitting the mirror is the angle of incidence. So that is the angle that is being provided from a light source that is casting um, light waves and hitting the mirror. When the mirror reflects the light back into your eye, um, that's called the in angle of reflection. You can see that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are going to be equal. Um, and that is what the law of reflection is talking about. There are two more words that we need to talk about when we talk about reflection. It's called regular and diffuse. Um, these, both of these words depend and refer to the surface that light is being reflected off of. So let's kind of break down each of these words and see what we mean. The first thing is called the ref uh, regular reflection. When we talk about regular reflection, this is talking about something like glass. It's, it has a smooth and even surface. Therefore, when you have an image that is being reflected off of it, it produces clear and sharp images because the way that the light is being reflected off of the surface is going to be in a parallel way and it's only going to be reflected in one direction. Therefore, you're able to see it very clearly. So if you ever walk by the side of a building, side of a store, you can see your reflection pretty clearly. Um, and that's because they are um, a type of regular reflection. The other type of reflection is called diffuse reflection. This is like a brick wall. This is when you have uneven surfaces that could be pretty rough and they're not creating an image, right? If you look at a brick wall, you ain't gonna see a reflection. Um, and that's because when you have light waves that are hitting it, when they get reflected back, they are going in all sorts of directions. They are not returning um, in a parallel way like the regular reflection we saw in the previous slide. So if you look at this image, you see light coming in and hitting the brick wall is coming in parallel. But when they're being reflected, they're going all over the all over uh, the place because the surface that they're hitting is very uneven. Therefore, it's not able to reflect in a parallel way um, like it can in a regular reflection. Um, when you have something like a, for example, in this image, it shows you a metal pot, right? If you look really, really closely, even though the pot itself looks very smooth, you can still have a rough surface that makes up a smooth looking pot or um, area. Um, and therefore it can create a diffuse reflection like we saw with the brick. Um, and so even though, you know, the surface of the pot could be very, very minimal in the way that it's made up of, um, in showing that it's rough, um, the way that the light is going to be re reflected will not be very parallel. It can still be disorderly and therefore you can't see a clear image on the pot. It's going to look kind of distorted. Okay, so when we talk about refraction of light, we're moving on to another thing that um, when we're, we're moving on from reflection to refraction. So when we talk about refraction of light, we're saying that light rays can actually refract, which in other words means that light rays can actually bend. 
And why does this happen? Refraction is basically when you have a change in the speed of a wave when it goes from one material to another. Um, so we're going to talk about this more specifically. But when we talk about refraction, always think about bending and always think about the change in the speed that is occurring in a light wave when it goes from one material to another. All right, so there's two scenarios we're going to talk about when it comes to refraction of light. The first scenario is, say you have two materials and there's a boundary that separates both of those materials. If you have a light wave that is traveling between these two materials to hit the boundary, that is not 90 degrees. So some other angle that this light wave is producing to hit the boundary other than 90 degrees, um, you're going to have um, the wave being bent. The wave of the light will be bent. So I'm gonna say that again. If you have two materials, you have the boundary between these two materials, say water and air, right? Um, you have air and you have water. You have this boundary right between where they meet um, and you have a light wave from the sun that is coming and hitting that boundary between the air and water. If that angle that is coming in from the light wave is other than 90 degrees, you are going to have that light wave be bent or refracted. Scenario two says, though, that if you have a light wave that is hitting a boundary between two material at exactly 90 degrees, the light wave will actually change its speed, but it's not going to have the uh, light wave actually be bent. So in the example of water, if we say air and water, you have a light wave coming in at exactly 90 degrees as it hits the boundary between air and water. It is not going to be bent. It's only going to change speed between one material to another. But if you have um, light waves coming in from the sun that is hitting the boundary between the air and water at another angle other than 90 degrees, it will be bent. There's something called index of refraction as well. So index of refraction will tell you how much uh, or the amount of bending of light is going to depend on the speed of light in each material. So the more difference that you're going to have between the speed of, the in, of light in each material, the more light is going to bend as it crosses the boundary between those two material. So index of refraction definition, as it says in bold, it indicates how much the speed of light in the material is reduced compared to the speed of light in a vacuum. So there are a couple things that the index of refraction uh, relies on. One, it depends on a light's wavelength. So if you have a longer wavelength that is traveling for light, it's going to have a small index of refraction. If you have shorter wavelengths, you are going to have a long index of refraction. Um, if you have a larger index of refraction, that means you have um, a slower speed of light that is occurring in that material. For example, air is going to have a greater index of refraction. I'm sorry, glass is going to have a greater index of refraction than air because light travels slowest in glass. Um, so eyeglasses are able to refract light um, as it passes through the lens of, that makes up the eyeglasses into your eye. When we talk about light, we have to talk about visible light. Um, so if you remember uh, talking about this in other science classes, we have a, something called an electromagnetic spectrum. So it goes from gamma rays, which are the smallest, to radio waves, which are the largest. And in between there, we have visible light. So visible light goes between 380 nanometers to about 750 nanometers. The purple or violet wavelength is going to be the shortest. Red is going to be the longest. Um, but depending on the light, waves that you uh, or the color of the light waves in visible light for example it will tell you the amount of um, bending that is occurring with the light so remember when we talk about visible light this is like the rainbow you have roy g biv red orange yellow green blue indigo violet the longer waves um, like i said are the red um, light waves and then the shorter waves are the violet um, light waves um, now when you have the sun 
the sun is actually going to give you the entire electromagnetic spectrum, but because of our atmosphere, it only allows visible light to come in. Um, and so the main uh, light that we get from the sun looks like white light, but it actually consists of the entire spectrum of the visible light that we see. You might have heard of a prism before. You might have seen a prism. You might have studied a prism. But the cool thing about a prism is it actually reflects light twice. So one, it will reflect light when it comes into the prism and then also it will reflect light when it leaves the prism. Um, when we talk about a, um, a wavelength that is of a light that is longer, the index of refraction that it has is actually gonna be a lot smaller. Okay, so the longer the wavelength, the smaller of index of refraction it's going to have. Therefore, it's going to be refracted or bent less than a shorter wavelength would. So a shorter wavelength would have a higher index of refraction. A longer wavelength is going to have a smaller uh, index of refraction. Longer wavelengths get bent less than a shorter wavelength would. So. If you have, if we said that red wavelength or the red light is having a longer wavelength, that means it's going to be refracted less, which also means it's going to be bent less. But if you have violet that has a shorter wavelength, that means it's going to be bent more. Um, one example of a um, prism that we can see every day is actually a raindrop. Um, rain can actually refract light or bend light. Um, it, how it happens is when it takes the white light that is cast from the sun, um, once it goes through the raindrop, it's able to separate it into different colors, which is the visible light that we see. And our eyes can actually sep distinguish um, each of those visible colors that come from the visible light spectrum, um, which is the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. I don't know if you guys have ever been driving on a hot summer day and you look in front of you and you think that there's a ginormous puddle of water and you're wondering how it um, could possibly have rained and how you possibly could have missed it. But then as you approach closer, it's completely gone. The road is completely dry. This is called a mirage. So basically a mirage is um, pretty an image that is... Um, an image of a distant object that is caused by the refraction or bending of light because of the air layers uh, that are made up in that area and those air, la air layers are made up of different densities. This usually happens when you have the um, air towards the ground level be a lot warmer um, than, the than the air above it or it can happen when the air on the ground level can be a lot cooler than the air above it as well. So for example, you might have noticed this like on your way to the beach, you're driving, you see this like mirage happening. Usually on a hot summer day or in the middle of summer, your road is able to retain a lot of the heat and therefore the road, is, the air on top of the road is going to be a lot hotter than the air above it, therefore creating a mirage. You could even see this on a cold day in February or January or December um, because again the road is holding on to that coldness and so when you're driving in the distance you the you will notice that because the road is a lot colder than the air above it once again you're producing a mirage when we talk about light waves light waves travel slower um, as the air is more dense um, and slower, um, obviously, in when the air is cooler as well. Um, so light waves do refract or bend as they pass through the different air layers um, because they are made up of different temperatures, which is causing these images to form. And that's why sometimes you can even see a reflection of objects off of the mirage, even if there is no actual um, water on the road which is pretty cool. Okay, so a couple of questions here. What is this pot 
showing is it translucent is it made up of translucent material is it made of opaque material is it made of transparent material or is it diffuse um that we're talking about if you said it's opaque you're absolutely right remember it's absorbing and reflecting the light um if you're talking about this prism so, which event explains why a prism separates white light into the colors of the rainbow? If you said D, refraction, you are absolutely right. Light is being refracted, refracted here in this image. Remember, red light gets refracted less because of the longer wavelength. Um, and the violet, um, which is towards the bottom of the uh, rainbow, it has a shorter wavelength. Therefore, it's going to be refracted more. 